In the recent video, we looked at the LTE configuration part to demonstrate dynamic spectrum sharing to you. Uh, now I would like to go into the 5GNR configuration and we're starting again with the SMW200A vector signal generator. So baseband A still uh, generating the 5GNR part. So if I choose the NR personality, um, I have a number of configuration options, of course. So the one to uh, talk about during uh, dynamic spectrum sharing is, of course, the configuration of the cell itself. So you basically see here, I selected the cell ID. Uh, since our carrier frequency is 850 megahertz, I'm choosing the deployment frequency range of below three gigahertz. Um, I configure the same bandwidth as on the LTE side, five megahertz in my case. And I can right away jump into the synchronization signal part because we want to transmit the synchronization signal blocks in the MBSFN subframes configured on the LTE side. So 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing is, so we are aligned subcarrier spacing between LTE and NR, a prerequisite for coexistence uh, for dynamic spectrum sharing to start with. And uh, since we have done that and learned uh, from the technological side, as well as from the demonstration uh, for LTE, that the first subframe is not uh, broad for broadcast, so it's not emptied out, it's used for LTE. We need to configure um, the transmitted SSB um, indexes accordingly. So that means basically uh, in the first subframe, um, the first two uh, SSB indexes are not transmitted, but since I can transmit in the second subframe that S is MBSFN configured, um, I'm configuring here um, this particular sequence, 00, zero which means the SSB indexes uh, number zero and number one are not transmitted, but then uh, number uh, two and number three are transmitted. So that's what I set up here, basically. Periodicity, uh, I selected accordingly. Of course, my MBSFN configuration throughout the network needs to match this um, particular periodicity that I selected here, uh, another configuration uh, parameter. And um, so that enables me basically now to transmit synchronization signal blocks into the emptied out uh, subframes on the LTE side into the MBSFN subframes. Next step is basically we take a look now at um, our scheduling part. So if I go into the scheduling part here for NR, looking into subframe zero, again, which is an LTE subframe, of course, there's nothing being transmitted, no synchronization signal blocks because that's what I, what I configured earlier. So the first thing that I can do here now is looking into subframe one. And in subframe one, I'm now seeing that I'm transmitting these two uh, synchronization signal blocks indexes according to the mapping scheme. The ma mapping scheme is defined as case A in the 38211 physical layer and modulation specification from 3GPP. And then I'm also seeing here that I'm now transmitting a core set, so the control part in NR as well as the data channel. So let's take a closer look here. So what you basically see now here, uh, I'm occupying one symbol with the core set and using uh, uh, one symbol as an offset occupying only six resource blocks. So we will validate that, of course, with the analyzer. But why is this offset? This offset, again, is there because an MBSF and subframe is not completely empty. And if you recall our configuration on the LTE side, we were using the very first symbol in the MBSFN subframe still for transmitting the LTE control channel. So that's why I need to configure that here on the NR side accordingly. Next is the data channel then, of course. So since one uh, symbol in that subframe is still used for LTE PDCCH, one symbol is used now for core set. I have 14 symbols in total. I can only occupy 12 OFDM symbols now with my uh, NR PDSCH. Uh, I have to use apply here, an offset of two symbols, which I do. But then I'm occupying the entire bandwidth, five megahertz, 25 resource blocks and uh, that we can validate that later on on the FSW, I picked here um, a modulation scheme of 64 QAM. So this is subframe number one. Subframe number two is also MBSFN subframe, and I also can transmit NR here, but uh, due to the mapping principle for 15 kilohertz for the synchronization signal blocks, I will not have any synchronization signal blocks being transmitted in that particular subframe, which I can actually see also on my configuration on the SMW. Again, only a core set, control channel and data channel with the very same configuration. One symbol occupied, one symbol offset. 12 symbols occupied with two symbols offset, six resource blocks occupied for the core set, 25 
resource blocks for the data channel. And again, it's using modulation scheme 64 QAM. So that's basically configuration on um, the signal generator. Again, both signals, LTE and NR, being uh, mapped together here in the IQ stream mapper block and then put on the same frequency, 850 megahertz. So what we are now expecting at the FSW is basically setting it to 850 megahertz carrier frequency and demodulating our 5G and R signal. So let's take a look. So as mentioned, uh, we are here at 850. Yeah? So I can still take a look at LTE. We're still demodulating also the ATE part, which is transmitted on 850. Uh, my NR part is uh, now configured accordingly. So I see here uh, similar measurements, EVM over carrier, EVM over symbol. I already can see here that we measure only a, from a time domain perspective on a certain number of symbols. Um, I'm seeing here basically the synchronization signal blocks. I'm seeing my data channel, uh, EVM over symbol. But the easiest way to take a look at that is of course, looking into the allocation ID um, over subcarrier over symbol. Um, which basically tells me I'm ignoring from an R perspective right now this very first subframe and the remainder of the subframe I'm only transmitting in within the uh, two subframes that are being configured uh, on the LTE side to be MBSFN subframes. I'm finding my two synchronization signal blocks being transmitted. I'm finding here the control channel, the six resource blocks being uh, transmitted with a one symbol offset, uh, which I see on these two subframes here. Uh, indicated again, that's because we have uh, MBSFN configured and the first symbol is still being used by the LTE control channel. And then the demodulation reference signals, as you can uh, imagine here, occupying the symbol right away after the core set and then my PDSCH. So again, I said the PDSCH is a 64 QAM modulation. So we can take a look at the constellation diagram here and we clearly identify here a 64 QAM modulation. We also see the QPSK here, which is the control channel, but also the uh, physical broadcast channel from the synchronization signal blocks. And then in the synchronization signal block, we have the synchronization signals, PSS and SSS, which are represented here by the BPSK. I can also, of course, take a look now on the allocation summary, looking in particular into uh, um, the synchronization signal blocks measurements, um, and then also core set and PDSCH, see a QPSK 64 QAM being demodulated for the two subframes. Um, so clearly uh, my uh, signal configuration matches. That's what I set on the signal generator. I hope the two recent demonstration have shown that the SMW200A vector signal generator and FSW signal and spectrum analyzer can be easily configured for dynamic spectrum sharing to demonstrate NILTE coexistence. This could be used to test ARF components like power amplifiers, but also uh, modem functionality, physical layer uh, approach, and verify a correct implementation of dynamic spectrum sharing under the umbrella of NILTE coexistence.